As much as we throw the word immersion around, I wouldn't say it's particularly common that a game really manages to immerse me. We often think of immersion as a measure of how convincing and authentic a game's world is, and lots of things can fly in the face of that. Link probably shouldn't wear a Nintendo Switch t-shirt. I don't know why the Master Sword is in Skyrim, or why Noctis is cosplaying as Bayek from Assassin's Creed. These lore violations can definitely sabotage immersion. The world's consistency and integrity is paramount, but for me personally, it takes a little more than that to produce immersion, and it is a rare accomplishment for a game to elicit that higher level of mental involvement that really qualifies as immersion status. Between monotonous structures, rigid narratives that don't budge, and missions that not only limit but punish the player's initiative, it rarely feels like my deep mental involvement is necessary to make it through a game. That's not to say that a strict narrative on its own can't be gripping and engaging. Obviously, the existence of film and literature substantiate that well enough, but it's incredibly rare to see a game that accomplishes that same caliber of storytelling without the gameplay feeling like a needless chore wedged between the player and the next cutscene. A game really falls flat when the actual game part is no longer the meat, but the broccoli that you have to work through before your mom will let you have dessert. It's sad when some games actually suggest that you skip the game part so you can watch the next cutscene. To be fair, those cinematic elements can do a lot to suspend the player's disbelief at a first glance, but those first impressions can be very misleading. It's easy to mistake the visually impressive or surface level elements of a game as an indication of actual substance. It's sort of like sometimes you meet someone for the first time and you think, wow, they're really good looking and fun. Funny. You really hit it off and connect, they say really witty things and you're having so much fun together, so you say to yourself, I really like this person, and you spend the $60 to buy her dinner, and next thing you know, you're a few weeks into the relationship, and that's when you learn that she's a huge fan of Two and a Half Men. And that's okay, like, Two and a Half Men isn't such a bad show, but soon you notice that all the funny jokes that won you over are just bits she heard from Charlie Sheen. And then it's not long before you realize there's no substance to this girl's personality. Everything she says is just the regurgitated contents of Two and a Half Men! And finally, one day she takes off her makeup to reveal that she is Charlie Sheen, but he's already moved into your apartment and installed himself onto your Xbox. Your money is gone, and there's nothing you can do about it. This is what happens every time I buy a Ubisoft game. I see it at E3, and somehow I end up saying, wow, this one's different, it's actually good this time. It's not till they've already got my $60 that I realize, lo and behold, it was Assassin's Creed the whole time again! What do you know? Now, don't get me wrong, surface level realism doesn't hurt immersion, and usually, the more graphically convincing your environment is, the better, it's just, really good looking cardboard is still cardboard. I understand that these massive games with streets by the hundreds and buildings by the thousands cannot possibly fill every building with handcrafted substance, but that ratio of, let's call it, substance per kilometer is critical. Window dressing does a lot for the player's first impression, but the effect tapers utterly as soon as they see it for what it is, a sort of meticulously generated emptiness that stretches for miles and miles and miles, just recycling the same tasks over and over, sprinkled onto different map coordinates each time. Often the loot you find is meaningless too. Sometimes it's not even rendered, it's just text that's redeemable for cash. In a good game, not only do the environments exhibit actual explorable depth, but the loot you find has real meaning. We often scrutinize Bethesda RPGs, and rightly so, but credit to them for giving every single item an actual useful application, if not a plurality of applications. And I realize they're not the only ones. The actual functionality and interactivity found throughout the world or environment is what makes a game fertile for producing immersion. And this doesn't just apply to open world games. If you look at Dishonored, for example, unlike most games, a room is not just four walls with a loot box in the middle. 
Every nook and cranny is brimming with application. A drainage pipe is an escape route with the proper ability. Simple pieces of furniture are actual hiding spots, and oftentimes there are hidden secrets that reward your detective skills. Much of the loot does redeem outright to cash, so it loses some points there, but overall we're looking at a solid quotient of environmental substance, and that's half the battle, but all of that substance can be compromised if the player is not compelled to use it. The most critical factor for my immersion is without a doubt the necessity to think on a moment to moment basis. A game is really immersive when you feel so wrapped up in it that for the duration of the game you can lose track of your physical surroundings. You almost forget momentarily that you're a dude sitting on a couch staring at the TV. You're not worried about the time or what's for dinner, you're in the f***ing zone. And for this duration, your brain is stimulated. In a lot of poorly designed games that are both too easy and too repetitive, you can give about 10 to 15% of your attention to the game as you beeline from one floating objective point to another. If you're like me, this prompts your mind to wander or just sort of turn off. You might grind out a few levels, but you barely even remember what happened. You just vegged out while your brain rested, and that's not inherently bad. Sometimes you had a day at work or school, and turning off your brain is exactly what you need, but you wouldn't call it immersive. When I'm truly immersed, my focus is sharply honed on those moment-to-moment -moment decisions and stakes. I'm caught up with each dilemma. Is now the right time to spend that rare item? If I die, how much progress will I lose? Should I spend the ink ribbon to save the game, or am I confident that I can survive until the next save point? What the hell do I do with this thing? Is it better to passively hide or claim whatever reward I'll get from taking out that enemy? Maybe half the party is dead, do I cut my losses and turn back, or tread forward and risk being wiped out? In my book, these tactically demanding moments that exert stakes and choice enrich a game with immersion far more than realism or graphics can. This is why something as visually archaic as Final Fantasy 1 can produce a greater immersion factor than something as visually stunning as Uncharted, where no matter how tactically absent-minded you are, you can never find yourself in any worse of a position than anyone else. Sure, maybe you have less ammo or health packs, but most games like this make it impossible for you to not be equipped and prepared for the next obstacle. Your tactics and strategy wield virtually no difference whatsoever. Of course, it's incredibly rare, but a game can have the visuals and the tactics. The Phantom Pain, for example, is one of the most cinematically accomplished games to date, and yet it manages to employ more tactical demand and choice than just about anything else. You don't just shoot an enemy, I mean sure, you can, but instead you might interrogate him and then knock him out. You might like his stats and capture him, or you might f*** with him in any number of ways. I've been in tight spots where I was surrounded and I could hide in a box, or call in an airstrike for a hefty fee, of course killing valuable soldiers that I could otherwise capture. I could toss decoys all over the place as a diversion, I could call in a massive smokescreen and just run away, or I might shoot my hand off like a rocket and knock everyone out, provided I invested in that ability. I could have just rolled up in a tank in the first place, but that would have probably scared the target away before I could get him. All of the above might work, but if on the other hand I just turned off my brain and pretended it was Call of Duty, in many situations I'd be dead in 5 seconds flat, and that's what holds it all together. The choice and freedom lay the foundation, but it's how compelled the player is to carefully approach each problem with thought and tact. That's what makes it immersive. If this immersion theorem sounds good to you, I recommend the following games just off the top of my head. Alien Isolation, Dishonored 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake, The Phantom Pain, Fallout New Vegas Hardcore Mode, which to be frank is a bit of a misnomer. It is not that intense. If you're really feeling hardcore, you might try Fallout 4 Survival Mode. I've ragged on Fallout 4 in the past, and believe me, I stand by that criticism. So if you're like me and you're not a fan of the voice protagonist, I recommend looking into some mods that outright patch it out. But all of that said, if you like survival games, I do think this mode is worth experiencing. But be forewarned, it is brutal. Every consumable is a decision. A stim pack can raise HP but has aversive side effects like dehydration. Eating uncooked food is tempting when you're starving but can give you all kinds of illnesses with stat debuffs, whereas Jet can be a get out of jail free card if you use it at the right time. 
Bullets often kill you in one or two hits. There is no fast travel. That part is sort of a nightmare, but again, mods can fix that. Not to mention, saves are limited to beds. It's punishing and extreme to the point that the main quest feels almost unfeasible, making this mode more suitable for a raw sandbox experience. But it fills every endeavor with tension and stakes. You'll find yourself creeping cautiously around corners and thinking through every minor encounter before you make your move. It makes you experience this world with an overhauled attention to detail and moment to moment involvement. The unforgiving nature of this mode exerts your ability to manage resources wisely to the absolute maximum. It's the ultimate test of your ability to play your cards right and think on your feet. But don't expect to succeed right off the bat. This mode is not shy about ruining your day if, say, you haven't saved in an hour. One thing's for sure, you won't be turning your brain off while you play it. I find it incredibly immersive, but punishing to the extreme. I'd say more so than the likes of Dark Souls. Don't say I didn't warn you. That's gonna do it for today. If you've enjoyed this content, please check out my other videos. This is a new channel, so your like or sub would go a long way. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.